In this video, we'll cover the Maven repositories. So just as a recap, as far as how Maven works, so we have this project configuration file, our pom.xml, that's basically our shopping list of all the items that we need for our project. Maven will read this configuration file, and then Maven will go out and check our local Maven repository to see if those files are there. If not, then Maven will actually go to the Maven central repository that's remote on the internet and grab the files from the remote repository. It'll download it, save it into our local repo, and then we can actually use it to build and run our application. And so we've seen this before. And the whole idea here is that we give Maven a shopping list such that this developer here <laughs> in the bottom left can actually sit there and drink his coffee. He doesn't have to manually go to every website, simply build a shopping list, and then Maven will go do all the work for them. So that's the main idea on how Maven works in the background. All right, so there are two main repository types. There's a local repository and the central repository. So the local repository, so as I mentioned, it's located on the developer's computer. So if you're using Microsoft Windows, it's in the C colon users, the user home directory, dot m2 slash repository. If you're using Mac or Linux, then it's in the user's home directory, slash dot m2 slash repository. And so Maven will actually search this local repository first, before going out to the Maven central repository on the web. So again, you can think of your local repositories like your local cache. Alrighty, so the central repository. So by default, Maven will search Maven's central repo that's remote on the internet. And here's the actual location of the remote repository. Now, one thing, since this is remote, it's on the internet, it requires an internet connection. So this is a good and bad thing. So it's good if you have a network connection, you can easily grab files and pull them down automatically. Uh, but it's bad if you have a limited internet connection, slow internet connection, or if you have no connection at all, you'll be very limited in what you can do depending on the size of your local repo. So that's kind of the good and bad thing about this central repository. But in general, most of us have network access, so it's not that big of a deal. But the nice thing about it is that once the files are downloaded, then they're stored in your local repository. So if you need to go grab that file again, it'll let you use your local cache instead of going out to the real internet. All right, so this is some good stuff. So in the following videos, we'll actually dig a little deeper into the repositories. Uh, we'll actually get a little backstage tour of the local repo, and we'll also get a backstage tour of the central repository. So I'll kind of show you some behind the scenes work as far as how these repos work out, where they're located, and we'll explore a bit. So I'll be your little tour guide here. Alrighty? Okay, good. So I'm having uh, too much fun here. So hey, I'll see you in the next video and we'll take our tour. See you then.